YouTube and welcome back to Ocean Owl Reefing. Today we're going to go over the sump overview of my Marine Land 180. This, uh, to start off, the sump is a Trigger Systems CR44, which is 44 in inches in length. Um, I have it plumbed with the dual overflow. I have a safety valve shut off ball valve at each corner. Um, one goes with the return line in and the other comes with the drain down. So here's one drain here, here's the other drain here. The water comes down and into a drain box in the far corner and then it spills over into three separate filter socks. And it has this little sponge which does catch Sometimes I'll catch my peppermint shrimp in there, or their shells. And I try to do, every couple of days, I will change the front filter sock. And then I will rotate the other two back and put the fresh one in the back. As you can see, I just did that right before filming today. Um, there's also a little safety overflow here. If it's the flow is not correct, it will spill over into the, into the skimmer section. So moving on over, I have an Aquamax Cone SQ2. As you can see, it is pulling some nice gnarly stuff out. Um, it's probably getting to the end of its capacity and I might be upgrading to the Q3, which is just a little bit bigger. I also have a Brightwell Neo, I don't think Neo, it's a export brick. There it is. Um, and uh, that's been running in there since day one. Um, whether it's working or not, I would like to assume it is. Um, so it, water comes through there, it goes through our skimmer. And here, this is our center chamber. It was a refugium. Uh, I gave up on the refugium. The refugium made nothing but a mess here in this chamber. Um, so I switched over to dosing another product, which we'll get to when we get down the line. So as of right now, all I have in here is two 300 watt titanium heaters, and it is controlled by an ink bird. And just uh, some rock, um, extra rock I had, and it's just in there with some ceramic rings. I also have over here a manifold. One is empty to be determined what's going in here. And this is running a mixture of the BRS ROX rocks carbon with a very little bit amount of GFO, the standard, not the high capacity. I change that out about every two weeks. Um, and it, it does a good job uh, with the other product I dose as well. The other product I do dose every morning is the Red Sea no pox. Um, depending on what my nitrates are reading, I will dose anywhere from uh, five to 15 milliliters. So if it's above 10 or nine or 10, I will dose about, you know, somewhere with, you know, between 10 and 15. If it starts, my nitrates start to get low, I will reduce that dosage depending on the test. So then we come into our spillover chamber here. This has an adjust, adjustable height here. Um, the skimmer likes uh, eight to nine inches and the water level is set just at eight and a half inches. And then in here I have the max spec jump and I believe it's the 12K up to 2,500 gallons per hour. Um, so that goes up and it tees off right up here. You, here we go. It tees off right up here and it goes left and right to go to the return section up as well as the manifold. And the, the flow is plenty strong enough. Um, it is pouring out pretty good. Um, and that valve is just about cracked. Um, so there's definitely plenty of power. I have that set at number five of 10. Okay, coming up here into the back, I have my ice cap wave maker controller for the two gyres and i also have two battery backups the the v3s um i don't know my electrics too well if they're in series 
or parallel. I, I think it's in series because it, it has longer runtime, not higher voltage. Um, so I, I've tested it to about five hours. My wave makers will automatically run at 40% um, if I do lose power. Moving over to our dosers, I have the Comor X1 Pros, uh, Wi-Fi dosers. I have one for alkalinity and one for calcium. And then I have some fancy dancy dosing containers. You know, top of the line here at Ocean Isle Reefing. You know, a couple gallon containers. Um, it gets the job done. Um, Currently, I'm not dosing too much because the corals are just starting to grow in. I think I'm at 15 milliliters of elk and calcium is maybe about five. Um, my last test was 8.7 alkalinity and 450 on the calcium. So that is just a standard power strip. But this power strip up here in the black is what the only thing I have to switch off when I'm doing a water change. Um, I switch off that their red button to the off and it, it kills my heat and it kills my return pump and it kills my ATO. Um, then all I have to do is tell my automated smart device to turn off my skimmer and it'll turn off my skimmer and off on a water change I can go. This is also a Bluetooth power strip here and this is power strip I have all of my lights plugged into. Um, the bottom four are not smart controlled, so I have my hydras and the cabinet light plugged into the bottom. And then on the top, I have my two T5 lights as well as my skimmer. Um, I really took care when I did this system to um, label every single cord. So I knew what was what, what I had to do, skimmer, hydra right, hydra C for the center. You know, I really took my, my time. You know, the battery backup chargers, the gyre controller, everything is meticulously labeled. The wire management is not the best. Um, all I have back here, if you look, is just the power bricks and all that kind of stuff. And I have a fan that kind of tries to keep that stuff uh, cool. Um, it is off at the moment, but uh, for the video, so it wouldn't make too much noise. And these are the things I dose on water change day. After water change, I do microbacter seven. Uh, directions say 50 milliliters. I actually add a cup, a cup and a half. So that's about 75 milliliters and keep the skimmer off for four hours. As we said, I do this every day. The Neo Nitro is in here. I haven't dosed that in absolutely months, months and months and months. No need to dose that. Um, my favorite part is my Amazon lights. Um, I went I went cheap and I just wanted something that would work. This kit was $15 and it works absolutely flawless. I can dim it to what I want or make it as bright as I want. And it's right here when I open the door. So this is my sump setup on the marine land here. And uh, so far, so good. Um, I did have a slight issue. Um, and if you see, I have, there's some slight salt creep on the drain line here. And the, the, the day it happened was, I had salt creep again. See, like I have it over here. And I, I kind of got, I got excited. I was like, oh no, why in the world? Why in the world is there salt creep? Let me tighten it. So I went and got some channel locks and I went and tightened the bulkhead. It didn't even tighten. It just moved it in the circle, in the hole, and water started dripping out like a, like a, like a little pinhole. It's like, you've gotta be kidding me. So actually I had to cut. You can see I made a coupling right here. I had to cut my plumbing off right there, drain the overflow, bring down the water. Um, and it's funny because the one that I actually redid is not really creeping anymore. Now, it is just a weep. It is not a leak. This is of a year's worth of sitting in here. So it's, I would not consider this an issue. 
Um, I'm leaving it be. Last time I messed with it, it, water started coming out. Water does not come out. So, and one last thing, I do have my Tunzi 5017 um, ATO. And I have my ATO reservoir on the other side of this wall. The hose comes and runs over. And because it's a 45 gallon brute can, um, I have to have this mounted up high. If I mounted my ATO output hose low, what would happen is, is it would siphon down. So I had to have this higher. So this pipe here is actually a missed glue job of the fitting that should have been over here. And I said, crap, well, now that I have this missed fitting, let me just put it right here. So the water drains in here and it actually makes a nice audible sound that I can hear. So actually it's good to know when I'm in the living room, I can actually hear the ATO kick on and kick off. It, it, okay, it's worked today. Have I heard that today? Yes, I've heard that today. So this is my basic overview of the sump at Ocean Isle Reefing. Guys, any, any questions, just put them down in the comments.